young man and his dear one there. Didn't you give me a, a, a pen a couple years ago? My family friends there, John, Amanda, and Terry, just raise your hand. They were at my desk early this morning. They got into the desk. And they said, where'd you get this pen? That's the man. Raise your hand. That's the man and the woman. They gave me, they gave me the pen. All right? If you would, if you would, open your, open your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. We're going to flip-flop around a little bit. Um, I, 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 I have a message, amen? It's good to have a message, but it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hopping around. You know, you better have something to say. You know, if you get up there, Brother Jones, and you're ready to speak and you can't say nothing, you're just, just tired and hurting, just say, Jesus, amen? Jesus saves. You just got to get out Jesus, amen? So uh, if you would, go to Acts chapter 2, if you would. The message is entitled today, Have You Got, have you got a Church Home? Now, I'm going to be getting into that a little bit. I mean, I, I can see, I know a good handful of you that this is your church home. Amen? Say amen or raise your hand. How many, how many here are church home? For sure. They got, okay, amen. Amen. Half, half, half everybody here has called this their church home. Now, there is some others here that, that haven't quite maybe called it their church home yet today, and I hope today it will be that. And like I said, you know, I have getting here maybe three, four times a year, maybe two, three times a year. And I do see a lot of new faces. And know what I really like, and I have a spot in my message for them, is the little kids, the children. There was seven, eight, nine of them all kind of lingered around there. And now they went, like I thought, they went to Children's Church. And my dear friend here, she was, she was getting them going, singing and teaching them in the classes. But we're going to move on. Acts chapter 2, you there? Say amen when you're at Acts 2. And if you, don't, if you do not want to flip around and follow... Sometimes just let me do it. That's what I'm here for. Amen. Chapter 2. Of, and we're going to start in verse, uh, verse 38. And this is after Peter's wonderful exhortation and preaching uh, at Pentecost. And it's talking about a community, a community of believers. So in a sense, we as Christians and we at the church house here, I'm going to use church house a lot, church home, that we are a community. And I saw in your, uh, your bulletin the word unity. Amen. The word unity, that means we're, we're, we're somewhat, pretty much in agreement with what we are in unity about. Amen? Brother Jones did a great, I was in and out today, but I heard Brother Jones sharing the, the sound doctrine of things. Amen? Yeah. When you come here, you're going to get the old, the old Bible preached. Yeah. The old way. You know, it may not be from me all the time, but it, Pete would do it. So you're in Acts chapter 2, correct? Yeah. Set your sights on, set your, amen, sister. Set your sights on 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And he shall receive the gift of what? The Holy Ghost. Amen? When you get saved and you ask Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life, immediately God, his spirit comes in and dwells. It indwells within you. Amen? Don't quench the spirit. Amen? We'll start off right with that today. Amen? We, we want to have the right spirit at the right time. The Bible also says, try the spirits. Make sure these are the right spirits you're following. Amen? All right, so we're there. Th that's 38. I want you to scan down to 41. I'm just scanning here. 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were, were added unto them about 3,000 souls. That was a big salvation. Amen? That's what people, somebody said, used the word revival before. I don't know. I think brother, brother did. I believe Jones' brother said revival today. That was a revival. They heard the preaching. They asked Jesus to forgive their sins. Asked whoever preacher there was they were working with. They got baptized. Amen. And then they were added to the old-fashioned church house. Amen. They were added to the believers. How many here have, have, are saved? Raise your hand if you know, save, amen. Okay, only a couple lingers. Oh, that's all right, that's fine. I was one of them too. I, you, know, I, 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 you know, I was not saved my whole life. I got saved when I was 27, but let's go on. Saved, you know you're saved. How many here have been baptized by immersion? Water baptizing, water baptized by immersion. Amen, just a few, few less hands. And thank you for being honest and open with that because it just helps me with when I give the altar call later. I like to repeat things. Let me repeat some. Then they that gladly received the word. Do you gladly receive the word? 
when it's preached or taught to you? Or do you scoff, well, what's that guy yelling about? Or what's this about? It's the Word of God. It says, they that gladly receive the Word. It's a comforting thing. Gladly receive the Word. Amen? Amen. And then it says, and they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. You, you got a whole, that whole verse covers this church house. There's fellowship. We talk, we laugh, we kid with one another, we pray for one another. There's breaking of bread. That means feeding. We're going to, we're going to, you, you guys, there's chili afterwards. There's just things to eat. That's the breaking of the bread. Amen. And also, if you want to take that a little further, when you have the Lord's Supper, supper, you break a cracker, you break, break something, you have the Lord's Supper together. Amen. That's a, a sample of that. And then in prayers. Prayer, the power of prayer. Our biggest weapon, we use the, the, the least. The power of prayer. To pray for our loved ones and pray for those that are sick. We are, so oftentimes, we, we pray flippantly. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help it all work. Oh, no, I'm going to tell you, get down, get down to the seriousness of prayer. Each one of us has trials and tribulations we're going through. We all have something in our lives that's festering us today. All right? But prayer can break through. Amen? And don't ever doubt the power of prayer. Amen? So now let's move on. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were, made, were done by the apostles, 44, and all that believed were together and had all things common. Now this is, this is going back 2,000 some years ago. This is the early church. This is the book of Acts. They had all things that were common. If you had a chicken or two chickens, and I didn't have a chicken, maybe you'd give me a chicken. So I, we're common there. We, got, we each got a chicken. Now, if you're over here, and you've got something in your possession, the two things, in the olden days, you might, your heart would be pricked by the Holy Ghost to help somebody. Amen? It's good to help. And you may give them whatever it is. It could be a donkey. It, 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 it could be, it could be uh, we got the chickens, we got the donkeys, now what do we need? We need a horse. Bro Brother Jones may have a horse farm. And I'm, I had a horse farm, actually, Brother Jones. And I've given people horses before. Most of the time I traded them, I horse traded them, but most of the time. But anyhow, moving along. And look at this one. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, and every man had need. If you have need of something today, let your, your, your church house know. It may be in reach of, of, of that help. You may be able to get that help if it's in reach. In other words, if it's, if it's there to be given. Amen? And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And look at verse four, 47. It says, Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as, as should be saved. Amen? Amen? So if you're here today... And you don't have a church home, and you are saved. I saw our hands go up. Prayerfully consider until we get to the end. I've, I've got some time here. I, I'm going to go from step to step with this, and just con consider this to be your church home, your church house. Now, I used to work for Calvary Baptist Church years ago, and I, my job was as a visitation director, and I visit people who visited and didn't visit. And they used to uh, ask me. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, what do they like best about the church house? And this particular pastor used that term a lot, the church house. Each of us, now let me ask you a question. Are each, do each of us have somewhat of a house or a home? I'm seeing. Does anyone have a home? Are, are, anyone has a home? I'm not, no trick questions, no trick. This is a secular home, just a home outside here. Most everybody has a home, I hope. Amen? Otherwise, we've got to figure things out here. All right, let's go on. Next point I want to give you is this one. Go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6, please. Deuteronomy 6. Say amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. We're going to read, we're going to read Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7, and then I'm going to share some light on that. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. Seven, key verse. And thou shalt teach them diligently 
unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Amen? That's basically talking about what? The children, right? But we as an adults, but we as our adults, as many as received him, he had the power to become the sons of God. So we're his children in a sense too. So if you would, if you would think of that, you are a child of God. Amen? But yet this Deuteronomy is saying, teach the children. Well, the church house here, and the church home, if you have nephews, uh, nieces, uh, little ones, you know, little tykes, this is a place that they can come into the church house and be taught, taught, amen, sister, amen. And they do that, they do that here. But what about you? What about you? Do, do you need some comfort? Let me, let me, let me give you a little, little idea what the church home I'm talking about, the type of home I'm talking about. It is a home that's warm and comfortable. It's a dwelling in which you are secure and happy. And you, and you get godly correction in a godly, loving way. A place where Jesus will forgive your sins. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that there's no better thing to be connected to something. Everyone loves family. Maybe you don't have a family. I didn't have much of a family. But when you come into a church house and you come into a home like this, you've got a family. family. Amen? And that's, 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 that's helpful. Amen? So, let's move on. Uh, uh, number two is, well, you can, you, you know, sometimes you need to heal. You need to heal. You come into a church and you got, well, what's going on here? I was at another church and they made me feel lousy when I left. They were, they were belittling me or, or talking down to me. Some churches have done that. This church does not do that. Pastor Pete is a loving pastor. Do I hear a, amen, amen. You don't, and his people and the people that are with him are loving. Hallelujah. A home that you can mature in. Now you're saying, well, the last passage of Scripture you used was talking about children. Well, if you're young in the Lord, and you're somewhat like a child in God's eyes, you need to mature. And what better place is it to mature amongst people that care and love you and think, and think for you, amen? Then the other one is, you can, you can, you can, you, it's a place where you can for, forgive past hurts. Now that's a, tr I hit a stump. I just hit a stump. See me plowing back here? Did you hear what I just said? I'm plowing the field and I hit a stump. It says this. A home where one can forgive past hurts. It's somewhat easy to forgive, but it is tough to forget. Amen? I go to an addiction program every Friday night. Every Friday, for the whole summer into this, I've been at an addiction program every Friday night. Now you're saying, well, are you addicted? Not, nothing majorly. I, I don't have no major addictions, but I have a friend that's in a, a rehab for six months that I was asked to learn about addictions so that I could help her, all right? So it's good, it's good sometimes to get out there and just do something to help and help them forgive the past. It hurts. We've all been hurt. We all can sit here and do that. So let's take your thoughts off that, erase that from your thoughts, because we're going to move on. I don't want no one here hurting or thinking nothing negative, okay? Now we got a home where you are available to serve. Amen? Amen. Isaiah, go to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah 6. Like Pete, Pete was, you know, he was somewhat kidding around, but he was serious that, you know, after the, the, the dinner today, he will need help from, from whoever is available to help clean up. Amen? And if you're there at Isaiah chapter 6, let me know. Amen. Look at verse, verse 8. It says this in verse 8. Isaiah 6, 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Woo! Amen? Here am I, send me. Hey, we need to get the, something out of the van. We got to get it downstairs. Who, 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 
here am I, send me, you know? Everybody, nobody really wants to dive in and work except for other people that are interested in helping, amen? The Bible says, if you need, if Pete, Pete may need something else, maybe it's not always Pete, so let me quit picking on Pete for a minute. There may be the, the, the Sunday school cast, uh, staff or the cooking staff. Uh, we could use some help. Can, can you give us a hand in here for a minute? Here am I, send me, the Bible says. Who would do that today, amen? Would you, would you step up and help? Amen, amen. I see the hands. I see them, amen. <clears throat> amen. All right, let's move on. Point number four. A home where you can make a commitment. Now, ah, that's going to get good. Where are you going to get that out of Psalm 23? Psalm 23, we usually hear it, uh, a funeral or something like that. But go to Psalm 23. Yep, amen. Psalm 23. Go there, if you would. In the middle of your Bible. And I'm going to show you a spot. Psalm 23. Hang in there with me. I'm trying to get the message out. Once I get the message out, I, 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 I'm praying the Lord to give me... A little preaching time, but let's just get there. Psalm 23. I'm going to show you something. This is referring to making a commitment. Is there, Psalm 23. All right, we're moving along. When you got papers stuck between papers, you got a problem with your Bible. But anyhow, the it ain't the Bible the problem. There we go. Psalm 23. A lot of people say, "Well, I heard that at a, at a, at a, at a funeral or something." Think of this today for the living, for us today, how this can help you. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd, amen? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, amen? And he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He leads me into green pastures, lush pastures, not burnt, not parched, amen? So you got, so you got good stuff coming here, amen? He lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Amen. He ain't saying that they're calm, but they're still. They're just going real slow, just nice and slow. Not like, not like the Niagara Falls up the road here. Amen. So he, he lays you down in green pastures, and he's going to do something there for you. He's going to leadeth me beside the still waters. We need stillness sometimes. I, I, yes, I do get loud and I do get carrying away, but when, when I'm out of the pulpit, I'm generally a pretty quiet guy. Amen? But anyhow, he leadeth me beside still waters. Number three, he restoreth my soul. Woo! Ain't that nice? He restoreth my soul. Things of the past, those things I was talking about in the past, he can restore your soul. He can rejuvenate you. He can help you. Hallelujah. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the past of what? Righteousness, righteousness for his name's sake, his name. We name the name of Jesus. We say that we're Christians, hallelujah. And look what he does. He, he, he what, what did he do? He what? He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Our testimonies are representative of the king, Jesus Christ. So we should live and do the best we can for the Lord, Amen. Okay, as we're going, we're going to continue. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, comma, the shadow of death. How many here? Whoa, what's that? Come on, I shall fear no evil. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know she gets excited. Hallelujah. She, it's, good to, it's good to get excited. It's a place where you can say amen and jump. Listen, the football game ain't got nothing on this. By the way, I don't even have a TV. How many believe that? I don't, I don't have a TV. I, it, it blew up, and I says, that's it. I don't need a TV. And I never watch TV anyhow, so I ain't got no TV. I feel sorry for you that got a TV. It's terrible, terrible. Got that TV. I'm telling you, you got that big thing. I go some places, got the big screen up there, and oh, big things coming at you. But anyhow, where are we? Where are we? Number four. <laughs> Number four. Or number three, he restoreth my soul. How many here need their, their soul restored today? I could use a little restoration. I'm kind of hitting a few bumps as I'm going around the trail here. I'm hitting a few bumps. Every time you hear this means I hit a stump. Or I got caught plowing, I hit a rock in the field. Amen. So I, help me to preach today. The more you say hallelujah, praise the Lord, the better I'll do for Jesus. Amen. 
And it says, he leadeth me between the baths of righteousness for his name's sake. We name the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's call this a church home. We got us a church home, a church house. Amen? Amen? Let's continue it. Don't stop. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff comfort you. The shepherd, the shepherd gleading the sheep. He got a flock of sheep. When I go to my friend's house in Byron, they got these, I think I counted them the other day. There's 20 sheep and one brown one, and the sheep. These flock, it's a nice flock. And they've been shown, they've been shaved down at least three times since I've been going there. But I'm here to tell you today, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Okay, we're all adults here. Got a couple guys that maybe ride a little bit here, biker. I was a biker, I'm not referring to that. Ever have a bad accident on a motorcycle? I have. I have. You have. God bless you. God bless you for being here. He was with you through the valley of death, where you could have died, brother. You could have died. And he saved you. I don't know if you're, you're spiritual walkers or not, but he saved you for today to hear the message. And, and I'm sure maybe you know already. I, I don't know who you are. But for thou, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's that near-death experience. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen? They comfort me. They don't beat me up. They don't insult me. They don't say bad things about me. They don't talk funny. They don't do this. They, the, his words and his ways, according to John 14, 15, the Holy Spirit says he is the comforter. Amen? He'll comfort you. If your soul is sad today and hurting, I don't, the only reason I'm not yelling to be arrogant, I'm just yelling because I'm excited, amen? Yeah. He, he may want to help you and get you out of a situation, amen? With me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Verse 5, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. I think that's something. I was, I, was, I was in gangs. Before I got saved, I was in gangs. And there were enemies around and God, God, God helped me get out of it. Anybody here attest to that? Amen. Amen. We got a couple of the guys. Amen. Amen. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Amen. Hallelujah. Get you some oil on you today. Amen. I don't know where they keep it around here, but I always got some where I'm at. But anyhow, you get a little oil on you. Amen. You're saying, well, that's foolishness to get, get the oil, put some oil on you. Amen. No, it's not, because the word anointing with oil, the word anoint in that particular, what I'm talking about, means the presence of the almighty God upon you, the presence of God. I'm telling you today, if my back was hurting, my butt was hurting, my foot was hurting, or something was hurting me, today I would ask you to go downstairs and get me some oil. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen? James chapter 5, I believe, says that. It says, it says say, say, she's, she's into it, amen. But anyhow, James chapter 5, anoint with oil. Call upon the elders of the church. Call upon, their, I'm looking at the other, Rob, uh, Pastor Pete, or Harry, and Larry, and everybody, everybody included in the group, amen. Yeah. Call upon them for a little oil, amen. But in James, let me just do a correction so we got sound doctrine, sound doctrine here. James 5 is referring to the healing of, of someone that's gone through some problems that couldn't get healed no other way, amen? I ain't talking about making a big show of it, no show with slapping oil on everybody, that's silliness, all right? But I'm telling tell, tell, tell you what, if you get, you get that oil flowing, amen, and that Holy Ghost gets involved in it, you'll get excited, hallelujah, I'll tell you, you'll be start shouting, you, you that can't shout today? You'll say, oh, brother God, praise the Lord, amen? What'd you do it today, amen? Then it says, Thou preparest a table before me, the prince of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Woo! Why don't your cup run over a little bit today? What are you just overflowing with the Holy Ghost of God and just the excitement of God? You're saying, that guy's making me nervous. He's making a lot of noise. Well, I can't, I can't help it. It's me. Verse 6, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house 
of the Lord forever. Woo! The church house, amen. We're going to dwell in the church house and make this your church home. And you go on and on. You say, well, now the guy's shaking his fist. Well, yeah, I am. I'm excited, amen. Surely goodness and mercy. And mercy. Oh, me. All the days, all the days of my life. Amen. How many know that song? All right, let's sing it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Woo! Woo! Amen. That was point four. I got a couple more here. Here we go. Okay, next one. It's a home. It's a home or a church house where you can learn the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's one spirit, but there's nine attributes of it. Okay, ready? We'll try to go through them, and then we're going to go back to them. Ready? Here we go. This is what you can learn. This is what you can have at this, this godly church. You can have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, patience, Meekness and temperance. I may have met, have met a couple there, but I'm here to tell you today that who needs a little love, amen? Not the right kind of love. I ain't talking about hugging with nobody now. Don't be hugging. Now, who needs some love? Amen. We need some godly love. Yeah. Amen. Feel amen. Yeah. Amen. Who needs some joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Who's got that joy? Amen. I love joy, peace. Who could use a little peace? The streets are getting a little rough out there. I need a little peace, amen? Yeah. Amen. Love, joy, peace. Goodness. We just sang about goodness. How about, could you, could you use a little more goodness today, amen? How about this one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get you fellas. A lot of you fellas got, got your ladies with you today. How about not only goodness, how about that mercy again? You need that mercy. You need, oh, yeah, we need mercy. A couple hands went up for that. Love, joy, peace, goodness. And here's the next one. Ready, ladies, you'll like this. And this is not in my notes. This, when I walk away from here, that's not notes. Here's, here's the next one. Love, joy, peace, goodness. Gentleness. Gentleness. Yes. I'm a real fan of gentlemanship. You treat your lady like a queen, like she's your princess, amen? You take care of her, and she'll take care of you. But here's the thing, man, you need to step out by faith. And you need to really show the example. And you need to te teach her and love her like God would do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm not talking to nothing funny here. I'm talking about good things. How about temperance? Last one. Temperance. Temperance means self-control. Yeah. Anyone got here? Self-control. Anyone struggle with that? I do. Amen. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Terrible. Self-control. That ain't good. So, see, that's, the, that's, that's my point number five today. That is point number five today about learning the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And you can learn that here at the church house. Amen. You can learn it at the church house. You can make this, this church house can become your spiritual home. It can, it can be that. Amen. And, and it, wants, it wants to be that. Again, I'm just loud again because I, for a lot of times you're loud to people that have tested it. Sometimes you're loud because you don't want no one to misinterpret you. You want to make sure that you heard me clearly. That's why sometimes you're loud. Other times you're excited, amen? So it's good to get it excited. Okay, here we're going to move along to point number, uh, point number six we're moving to. A home where you can fellowship and be faithful, loyal, and giving. Okay, ready? So church house, the home, where you can fellowship, where we do, we get together, we do things, and be faithful to the church house and be loyal. You know, I talked to um, I talked to someone this week, and I'm not shining on my badge here, but it was with somebody I knew for 20 years, and I no longer know her. But um, she told me over the phone what attracted me to her was loyal. I was loyal. Wouldn't we be more loyal to God and more faithful? Amen. Hell, God, we're on we're on a roll. Let's don't hit no more stumps. I don't want to be keep hitting. We hit a stump again. Hang on. Here we go. What about giving? Giving. When you give, 
Give what the Lord will have you to give, what you can give. Amen? Do it out of the abundance of your heart and your, your, your life and your thing. Let me tell you a story about hilarious giving. Hilarious giving. I'm sure Pete's done this over the years, but there was another church that did this that I know of. They had a heater broke. I'm sure Pete's done this illustration, but I'll give it to you quick. I had a church friend that about 20 years ago needed to raise a few money, um, some money amongst the parishioners. And they said, uh, we're going to need to pass the plate. And there's way less than you. There's about 10 of them in this church house. And they passed the plate, and people did what they could. They, they gave what they could to that plate. Then they said, oh, it's not quite enough. We've got to get a heater fixed in this church. It's getting cold. So they came again. He says, know what you got to start doing? Hilarious. Hilarious giving. Where you're hilarious. Where you're happy about it. Whoa, I'm here. There's five bucks. There's a penny. Here's a, whatever it may be. Would you be a hilarious giver today? I've a home beyond the river. I've a mansion bright and fair. I've a home beyond the river. I would dwell with Jesus there. Now, the way I'd like to do the altar call, we got five minutes left according to that clock, which is 10 minutes slow, so I'm, over, I'm past 12 right now. But let's have an altar call. Is there anyone here that wants to come forward and pray with me? Not only, they may need salvation. They may need to rededicate their lives. They may want to make this their church house. They may want to make this their prayer. The prayer. Whoever is here, they'd like to come forward for Jesus' sake, not my sake, but for God's experience with you today and the word that you heard, except for, except for from Psalm 23. Would you come as I begin to sing? I've a home beyond the river. I've a mansion bright and fair. I've a home beyond the river. I would dwell with Jesus there. I'm going to lay down my burdens now, down by the riverside. Down by the river, come on, come on, church. Down by the riverside, I'm gonna lay down my burdens now. Down, by how the ladies? How about it, man? Here come the ladies. Come on, guys, step out, show your honey or something. I'm gonna lay down my burdens now. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside, I'm gonna lay down my burdens now. Down by the riverside, I'm gonna lay down my burr. Keep it going, come on, church. I'm gonna put on my pure white robes. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, I'm gonna put on my pure white robes. Down by the riverside, I'm gonna put on my pure white robes. Come on, walking shoes. I'm gonna take off my walking shoes. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, I'm gonna take off my walking shoes. One more time, let's do it one more time. Pure white robes, pure white robes. I'm gonna put on my pure white robes. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, I'm gonna put on my pure white robe. Down by the riverside, I'm going to put on my pure white robes. Amen. Hallelujah. Let, woo! Thank you, Brother Chet. Amen. All right. God is good. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, honey. You it spent was all getting the good. <laughs> it was getting good. She said it was getting good. <laughs> it was getting good. Well, listen. Listen, on a serious note, if you don't have a church home, Pete's not telling you this. Pete didn't tell me to say this, but I'm saying this from my note. You can look at my note. Make this your home. Make them your friends. And if you're going through tough times, talk to me. I'll be, I'll be around. I probably won't eat because I don't eat when I'm wound up a little bit. Um, but talk to someone if you need help. Salvation, rededication. I think rededications are just as good as salvation or better.